The recently released race mode from Wahoo has had a lot of attention in the last few days. Race mode is a mode where the power reported from the kicker is sent at 10 times the previous speed, so now at 10 hertz. The result being less lag between you producing power and you seeing that power translate into what's on the screen and moving your avatar forward. Upon release, race mode was only available on the Kicker 6 using the Direct Connect protocol, either via Wi-Fi or via Ethernet. Wahoo have now just released a new firmware for the Kicker 5, which also enables race mode, but you do have to have one of these Direct Connect adapters connected to that trainer to access this feature. Erg mode Easy Start is also a new feature for the firmware that has just been released. With a lot of discussion around race mode being, does it really matter? Is it a marketing gimmick? Does it translate to in-race results? I decided to do even more testing with the Kicker 5, updated with race mode enabled. I performed seven different tests over seven different events, mixing up the connection protocols, the discipline type, and the bike type for each of these tests. Of the seven tests performed, race mode won six of them. Did you have to give it away? Okay, now we know the results, let's look at them unfolding. Okay, welcome to the watch through party of all seven events. Now I'm just gonna show you the first few seconds or so of each of these events and the last 300 meters or so. The results are really what we're here for anyway, so I won't bore you with the entirety of these races, although they are quite interesting to watch with positioning. Now what I have here on screen are three different machines running Zwift. I have a HP Omen PC and an Alienware Alpha R2 running Windows 11, fully patched up, an M1 Max Mac over here, latest version of Mac OS. The connection protocols are listed there on screen. Bluetooth, Amp Plus, and Dircon with race mode enabled. One of my tests has Dircon with race mode disabled. We'll see that in a few tests time. All right, kicking off with event number one. It is a drafting enabled event. So we're on road bikes. The Dircon with race mode gets a jump because of that, uh, the quicker packets being sent or more packets being sent earlier on. However, it doesn't maintain that number one position around the corner. Amp Plus dropping off a little bit. But that's the start there. So got the initial jump, but doesn't have the advantage right now. Okay, let's jump to 300 meters to go. Okay, rocking in at, well, 400 meters to go. Bunch is still together. And the positioning is very, very interesting. I was able to surge the Dircon rider and put that rider in front when I wanted to. Um, now these are all connected to the same kicker. So they should all be very, very equal or even, but there is drafting happening here. All right, kick starts here at about, well, about 100 meters or so. The Dircon rider gets the jump, gets the momentum, and takes the win. One for one by 0.1 of a second there. So Dircon first, Bluetooth comes second, and Amp Plus coming third. Amp Plus having on average, more watts. So again, it's all about the packets and when they're received. However, one for one for Dircon. On to test number two, a time trial. Okay, five seconds to go. And our positioning is that the Dircon rider is on the outside position. Everybody here is on time trial bikes, so no drafting. Everything else should be even Stevens. Now, kicking off for the first few seconds here. And Again, Dircon has just a little bit of an edge, except coming into this corner, a little bit out of position. So we have Bluetooth leading, we have Amp Plus FEC coming second, and then we have, wait for it, Dircon with race mode just made up a position. All right, let's jump ahead to 300 meters to go and see where things are at. Well, because I forgot to make this an event and only limit it to two Ks, I'm gonna stop it just up here at the archway, but we are around about two to 300 meters to go. And we can see Dircon with race mode, with its higher frequency packets flying through there from the kick at five. Uh, it's in number one position. Number two, we have Bluetooth. And in number three, we have Amp Plus FEC. And we'll take it on the line for the positioning around this corner. And we have, it's clear as day, Dircon taking the win. Bluetooth second and plus third on that one. Okay, two from two for Dircon. Let's try another test event on a different course with TT bikes. Similar setup for the bikes this time around and the event is a time trial, one lap of downtown Dolphin or Crit City or whatever it is, uh, the Bell Lap. That's what we're doing one lap of. Okay, Dircon with race mode, 
gets the jump again. However, it does have the positioning of the inside there for that turn. Uh, don't be phased by the wrong bikes being shown. Swift just doesn't update when you change bikes. So everybody here is on a time trial bike and is uh, not drafting each other. But there is some positioning effect, I feel. But this is why I ran multiple tests so I wanted to make sure that uh, there was consistency there, not just some randomness. Um, okay, so first few seconds of this event, before we jump through to around 300 to go, we have Dirk on race mode in the lead. We have Ant Plus FEC coming second, and we have Bluetooth closely following in third. All right, jumping ahead. Coming in at 300 meters to go, and not much has changed from what we saw earlier on. Dirk on race mode has a bit more of an advantage a little further down the road, Bluetooth coming in second place there, and Ant Plus FEC has dropped right off. That's uh, yeah, quite the distance there, with everything being equal. This course is a little undulating, so whether those power packets being uh, a little faster helps out. I'm not quite sure, but we have here the results. Dirk on three for three, and we have Bluetooth coming second and Ant Plus coming third. Now the next test, I turned off race mode, but still used Dircon and ran this exact same event again. Things should be a lot closer this time between all three. Five, four, three, two, one. And as you note, up there in the connection protocol information, I have race mode turned off, but still using Dircon. So over Wi-Fi using Dircon, still gets the jump, but not too far off Bluetooth. Positioning this time around, Dircon, with race mode off, so back to one hertz. Again, doing numerous tests just to make sure we're not seeing anything strange. And things are a lot closer now between Dircon and Bluetooth. And uh, Ant Plus FEC is holding on. Right, jumping ahead to 300 to go. And as expected, things are a lot closer when they're all on one second update interval. Uh, the Mac may be on three second averaging, just FYI, so that may be showing a little bit different but against the results we're after. It doesn't affect the in-game positioning or in-game avatar movement, having that smoothing on in-game. So uh, Dircon and Bluetooth are, oh, sorry, Dircon and Ant Plus are going head to head. They're all very, very close for this event. Coming through the results there, you can see them pop up very, very quickly. What do we have? 21.3.5.7. So we have Dircon with race mode off, still winning the event by a little bit. And plus FEC coming second and Bluetooth coming third. So four from four with Dirk on, um, but three from three with race mode on. To switch things up, I moved Dirk on over to the Alienware R2 and put Ant Plus on the Omen PC and changed the M1 to Bluetooth. So I just wanted to make sure it wasn't the Omen PC always winning because it has a higher processing power than the rest. So let's see how things go here. And no surprises, Dirk on with race mode gets the jump. Now this is a bunch ride with drafting enabled. So there will be that variable too. So Dircon won't always win. It's not that much greater, but bunch positioning, especially coming into those sprints do matter as we'll see as at about 300 to go. Okay, jumping here at about 400 to go. Now we have Dircon, which is above me with race mode, just sticking its nose in front and opening the sprint up from the front position. Bad place to do it. So in the Llama jersey on the Omen PC, gets a perfect sit. And very interesting what happens with this one. Okay, sprint opens up now. Front position for the front two and the Ant Plus uses that momentum to roll through and beat race mode. We're using Dircon, so we have a win to Ant Plus there. Now there's not much in it whatsoever. Um, what do we have? 315.7, 315.7, 315.8 for Bluetooth. Uh, looking back at the replay there, you can see the drafting effect taking, uh, taking the win effectively because it gets the roll, the momentum, and then rolls past that rider. The actual win though was only two frames at 60 frames a second. So doing the math on that, what's that point three, uh, one thirtieth of a second for the win. So there really wasn't much in it, but credit where credit's due, Ant Plus did win that, but I do think it was down to that drafting. Okay, test number six was a replay of test number five. However, I thought I knew how to put the Direct Connect rider ahead of everyone else at will, on demand, whenever I wanted to. So here's a test of that. 
Uh, everything else exactly the same, except the method on how I race this. So Direct Connect Rider with race mode on on the Alienware Alpha gets the jump, but the Ant Plus Rider comes through and gets a bit of a gap. That gap didn't last too long. Um, we're all bunched up and I was able to surge just a little bit at will and put the Direct Connect Rider on the Alienware Alpha ahead of everyone else. Okay, let's jump to 300 to go where I put that into practice to win the race. Okay, 300 meters to go in this event. All very, very close still, no breakaways, which really shouldn't happen given it's all connected to the same power source. Uh, the Dirkon Rider is well positioned there in the, in the draft. Now we're all three across the road, nice and even. I'm waiting to the very, very last second to shoot forward. There it goes. And took the win clearly there with Dirkon on the Alienware Alpha. 331.7, 331.8, on the Bluetooth connection. So it does give me a racing advantage depending on what everyone else is doing as well. But that little late surge, I was able to put that bike in front of the others and a win is a win. So that is, what is that? Five from six now. Okay, test seven of seven, last one before we call it a day. Back to the time trial bikes, no drafting. Um, disregard what you're seeing on screen. Everybody is on a time trial bike if you look at their individual screens. Dirkon gets the jump with those faster packets coming out of the kicker for that protocol. And on course now for the two kilometer time trial here. And all very, well, let's admit it. It's pretty uninteresting because we pretty much know what's gonna happen. Let's jump ahead and have a look. 300 to go. Gaps, we have Dirkon in the front. We have Ant Plus coming second and Bluetooth in third. Not much in it, however, a win is a win. Surging ahead here, just to the end, you can see the power graphs here on the top two screens and Direct Connect taking the sixth win out of seven. So 30206, taking it by 0.4 of a second and yeah, quite a few gaps there. Now they were only two kilometer events. Imagine that over 20, 40, 60, or maybe even a hundred kilometer events. Those small marginal gains have to add up and definitely do even over two kilometer events. Now kudos goes to Wahoo for this one. Originally they weren't going to release race mode this soon for the Kicker 5, but they did see everybody's feedback on the videos and other posts. Some of the engineers behind the scenes did some late nights, performed a number of tests, including the races you just saw then. I was part of that testing and it has been rolled out. So awesome stuff from Wahoo. This marginal gain is definitely worth doing and definitely worth using if you're racing for sheep stations. Alrighty, and with that, we'll leave it there for today. As always, if you've enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe to support this channel, and we shall see you soon.